Hello, Vince Graham here with an update to a video made last year about the Sullivan's Island Elementary School. Posted below is a link to that earlier video if you're interested. Many are concerned the size of the proposed elementary school is inappropriate for the island. This is my attempt to provide clarity for what is being proposed. The new school building is expected to cost more than $26 million. The land value of the oceanfront site is estimated to be at least $24 million, which would bring the total value of public resources to more than $50 million. In October of 2011, Town Council ratified an ordinance granting a 75-year lease on this $24 million oceanfront site to the Charleston County School District for $10. Mayor Pro Tem Mike Perkis had to sign the lease because Mayor Carl Smith, the only dissenting member of council, refused to do so. Incidentally, Mayor Smith is a registered architect. I thought it interesting that the mayor was the only design professional on council. Maybe the other members, hurried by vested interests, simply don't fully grasp scale and proportion. Hopefully, the following comparisons will be of assistance. The existing school is approximately 30,000 square feet. It's about the size of the commercial frontage along Middle Street between stations 22 and 22 and a half. Check it out. The school outlined in red moved over to the commercial frontage along the south side of Middle Street. Seen from another angle, the existing school moved over to station 22. Now let's consider other large structures on the island. This is a house at station 18 and a half. Massive structures like this led council to pass strict size limits for new homes a few years back. Here's another large structure, the former Army BOQ, now turned into condos, and the island's Baptist church. Seen from above, here's the aforementioned massive home, shown in red, the condo building in green, and the Baptist church in yellow. For good measure, let's throw in another large structure, the Sand Dunes Club, shown overhead in blue. Now let's overlay these large structures on the elementary school, the massive house, condo building, club, and Baptist church. These four large buildings cover about the same area as the school. Looking at some other familiar buildings, this is the new sanctuary and parish hall of my church, Holy Cross from Jasper Street. Overhead, you can see the new sanctuary, parish hall, administrative and classroom building, and the historic church, all located on a site less than one acre. Toss in Sunrise Presbyterian Church on the eastern end of the island. Here it is from overhead, outlined in purple. Compare these building footprints with that of the school. The new sanctuary, parish hall, administrative building, and historic church of Holy Cross, and the Presbyterian Church in purple. We've still got room to fill, so grab the island's firehouse, shown in orange, and move it over to the school. The footprints of the firehouse, Presbyterian Church, and four buildings of Holy Cross would fit nicely within that of the existing school. Now let's compare the proposed Sullivan's Island Elementary School with the existing school. Here's the floor plan of the new school taken from the design firm's website. The plan indicates it was prepared on July 28, 2011. Here are renderings prepared on October 4, 2011. I must admit, to finding these obscure renderings disappointing, particularly for a building budgeted at $26 million, where the project architect stands to get more than $1.5 million in design fees. Nevertheless, these vague drawings are all we're given to go on. These aerial perspectives were also prepared on October 4th. The interesting thing about these dates is the first reading of the ordinance establishing the 75-year lease was on August 16th, 2011, with subsequent readings in September and final ratification in October. Town Council was made privy to the design as early as January of this year, but the plans weren't made public until recently. This is also disappointing. Substituting concealment for transparency and propaganda for communication is not effective leadership. In fact, such a lack of transparency and communication undermines faith in government. So anyway, back to the proposed school design, which at 74,000 square feet is more than twice the size of the old school. It's about 625 feet long by 190 feet wide. Outlined in red, this is how it looks overlaid on the site. The proposed structure dwarfs the old school. Compared to the Middle Street commercial area we looked at before, this is how it looks. It would stretch from Dunleavy's Pub across Station 22 and down to the Marsh Winds office building. To add further context, Marsh Winds is about 38 feet tall, and the new school is expected to be closer to 50 feet, 30% higher than the maximum currently allowed for island structures. Now let's look at another familiar structure, Publix Grocery just off island. Here's an overhead shot of the 48,000 square foot store. Moving the new school in, it stretches across the store and parking lot. Let's now move to another familiar place. From overhead, 
the Yorktown's dimensions are 872 feet long by 148 feet across. Moving the school in, you can see that at 625 feet, it's not quite as long as the Yorktown, but at 190 feet wide, it's larger than the ship's beam. Moving our school outline back to the island and compare it with this structure, Battery Jasper next to Fort Moultrie. From overhead, the outline of Battery Jasper is almost the exact same size as the new school. By coloring in the outline, we can thus move it around to give an idea of the scale of the new school. It won't be exact because Battery Jasper is only about 20 feet tall, whereas, as mentioned before, the new school will be closer to 50 feet. Kind of like stacking two Battery Jaspers on top of each other. So once again, an outline of Battery Jasper from overhead, comparing it with the new school. Now let's darken it in and take Battery Jasper for a ride down Middle Street. Back to the commercial area, with our school outlined in red and moving Battery Jasper in. Now let's move it over to the school site. Another perspective of Battery Jasper, darkened in and moved eastward to Station 22. There we go. Now moving Battery Jasper to the school site. So, with your imagination cap on, think of a building here sitting broadside to the ocean with a footprint of Battery Jasp, but about twice as high, and you'll have an idea of the enormity of this proposal. Hopefully, this has provided a better understanding of scale and proportion, and why more than 10% of registered voters have signed a petition asking council to reconsider this proposal. We can do better. Let's hit the pause button and reconsider the school plan in the context of what's appropriate for our small island town. There are many thoughtful people who care about the issue. They want a school, but are legitimately concerned about the issue of scale. Their voices deserve to be heard at least as much as the 5% of island households with young children and those with vested interests that stand to gain from building such a large landscape. The town has numerous large and valuable land holdings and issues like a new town hall confronting it. To achieve excellence rather than embarrassing mediocrity, these must be considered in an overall vision to make the island a better place to live. Let's exercise stewardship in a manner consistent with the soul of our island, an investment of time that will benefit this generation as well as those to come. Thanks for listening.